All right, hey guys, welcome back to another video. So it is a beautiful summer's night here in Melbourne and I thought this would be a great opportunity to give you a real world example of how we've been using autopilot and how autopilot works on normal streets. So we're here in the Mornington Peninsula it's relatively busy, um, so there might be some good examples of when you need to disengage autopilot. So, without further ado, let's give you a real world example of how autopilot works. All right, so blue lines means we're in autopilot. We're just on a standard road. It's nice and quiet, which is good. So we were actually in a 40 zone then, and it accelerated us to 60. So sometimes it does get the speed limits incorrect although it does a pretty good job. So it wants me to do, apply some force to the steering wheel just to make sure I'm still here. Again, flashing blue. So I'll just give the steering wheel a tug. Obviously the idea is that you just keep your hands rested on the wheel. And you can see now that it's recognized the car in front of us. It's recognizing the bike lane on the left and the speed limit signs up here will also be recognized it's backing off because it's got that adaptive cruise control, keeping a nice distance in between the car in front, which I can toggle right here, three distances, four distances. And again, picking up those speed signs. So doing a pretty good job. It really just takes the fatigue out of driving. Like it makes it so much easier, especially on freeways. It's obviously not completely designed for normal roads like this, like single lane roads where there's lots of interference. Um, obviously there's a person here, okay. Didn't seem to be bothered by that person. Normally it would uh, apply the brakes as soon as it notices a pedestrian. I've gotten into the habit now of quickly disengaging autopilot if I know there's something that's gonna upset it. For example, if a car sort of cuts you off or uh, there's a bike that it's probably not correctly in the lane. I just disengage because I don't really want it applying the brakes. The other thing that you can do is put your foot on the accelerator if you, if you feel like it's safe to do so. And that just lets autopilot know you're happy to continue. Um, so yeah, there's a few little tricks like that. I haven't paid for the full self-driving package, so it's not going to be stopping at any traffic lights for me, but it certainly knows that they're there, whether they're green, red or orange. So pretty cool that the camera system does that. Nice little swerve here. Um, does a really good job of just predicting what the lanes are doing. So far, this hasn't been a very eventful autopilot uh, showcase for you. Often, because uh, this is such a busy road, you'll see uh, cars, or well, here comes a pedestrian up here. No. Um, you'll see cars cutting in front of you and and autopilot freaking out in a good way, um, warning you a lot, and uh, we haven't had anything like that so far. I've spoken about this before on my channel, but when you are on highways and you've got the standard autopilot, the most frustrating thing is that you're constantly disengaging to overtake people. So if you do have the full self-driving package, it will change lanes for you. Um, which is pretty cool. Wow, that is a big boat. And it came very close to the car. <laughs> Bit of a sunset there in the background. We are getting into a busier area now, so it'd be interesting to see what it picks up. Interestingly, it's asking me to apply pressure to the steering wheel a lot more than normal. It's not happy with the conditions. Also, this camera up here, the cabin camera, is doing a lot more than it used to. Uh, so, typically, we find if we're like looking away, um, it will sometimes give us like a little warning when it normally wouldn't do that. So, you'll see that this single lane is going to be divided into two lanes, and the car will make a decision now as to left or right. It's going to go left seems to be different every time. Sometimes it goes to the right side in this particular spot. All right, so it's recognized the 50 speed limit. It's gonna automatically drop the car down even though we we're going slow anyway, but that's now set. Well, it hasn't actually changed the max, which is interesting. 
it normally does that as we go past the local carnival. Now I'm not obviously touching the brakes or anything, the car is just keeping the perfect distance. So if that means that we come to a complete stop, autopilot will do that without any drama at all. Certainly a lot busier around here. So I'm being super careful as to what is happening around me. And you'll see now, we're gonna to come to a complete stop only because the car is in front of us. If there was no car in front of us, then autopilot would know that it's a red light, but it would not necessarily, it's not gonna stop unless you pay for the full self-driving package. Those people are looking at all my cameras in the car going, why are you filming? Okay, so it's gonna take off for me. Haven't touched a thing. All right, I've just lost my camera, as you can tell. All right, I'm just gonna get us back on the road. It does sometimes feel a little bit too close to these cars parked on the left-hand side. And you can see a very heavy brake there. That was not me, that was autopilot. And I'm just going to disengage. It does feel a little bit too close for comfort on the left-hand side there. I don't want someone to open their car door. And there is a lot of people around. So that was my first manual disengage. Just felt a little too close to those parked cars, which it has done before. Wow, it's crazy around here. All right, so I'm just gonna engage autopilot again. Speed limit is correct. And now it's going to merge into a single lane, which it does nicely. Up here, it should recognize the new 60 zone. Let's see if this time it automatically adjusts. No, so I'm gonna tap on the 60 and then it's gonna accelerate and make that the new limit. So it hasn't been a flawless drive so far. Oh my God, so many cabin noises. I am so sorry. I will get more camera equipment, but beautiful time to drive nonetheless. And you're getting some nice sunset shots. I have this slight rattling noise in my back right door. And I kind of forget about it, but every now and then I'm reminded that it's just there buzzing away. So I probably need to get them to look at that. Oh, watch this, here we go. Okay, so big heavy brake there from that car. Um, I actually applied the accelerator just uh, because I didn't want, um, I didn't want any more heavy braking, it's never fun. But you get good at predicting things like that that are gonna happen. I'm surprised the alert sound didn't happen Normally it would come up and beep, 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 and you know, sort of really encourage you to, uh, to break, but it did it for me. Oh, here we go again. Not a heavy break. I'm just gonna apply the accelerator. I mean, it's doing the right thing. All right, I'm gonna pull over here. All right, so that about, that about sums up today's video. I hope that was somewhat useful as I, fix the camera. Um, I'm going to try and do some more autopilot videos. I feel like a lot of people are interested in it and you should be. It's pretty amazing technology that's constantly getting better with every update. But yeah, that's it for today. I'll catch you guys soon. Hope you're having a good one. See ya.